Welcome back to Behind the Scenes. Uh, today I'm going to continue my conversation of uh, theater and different questions that some of you have had about theater and in some cases specifically about me in regards to theater. From Stephen Dice, who said, I'm interested in the art of ad-libbing or what it's like acting in front of a live audience such as theater and any interesting interactions with the audience during a production. Um, ad-libbing uh, is typically only going to happen when things go wrong. <laughs> Uh, for instance, if an actor forgets their lines, then they might ad-lib until they remember their lines or until another actor somehow helps cue them back into their lines. Or if something goes wrong, if someone misses an entrance, a prop piece doesn't work properly, uh, a door won't open, all those sorts of things can be instances for ad-libs. And again, the actors really have to just pull themselves together as a team and find a way through those sort of mishaps. Um, I've certainly had things happen. I've had, I've forgotten lines. I've had other actors forget lines. Um, it's a little, to me, I still find it sc scary when it happens. It's like this moment of panic. Oh no, I have no idea what I'm supposed to say next. Uh, and it's particularly daunting when you're on stage by yourself, which has happened to me once or twice. I remember I was doing a production of Hello, Dolly! one time, and um, there's a point where Dolly has a whole sort of monologue that she does um, before a song, and there was a point where I was on stage by myself, and I had no idea what was coming next, and I thought there was nobody else on, on stage to help prompt me or anything like that, uh, and... I started, I went, well, is this a song? And so I started to sort of maybe give the um, the dialogue that's entered that song. And as I was talking, no music was coming up underneath me. So I thought, well, I guess that's not right. <laughs> and somehow I sort of continued to, you know, talk in the moment and, and then I kind of found my way again and proceeded on, but that was just a scary few seconds and it was probably very short, but to me, it felt like a train went through. Um, so I've had, I've had those types of things happen where I, I or another actor have forgotten lines. I had one in, instance where it was a three act play and there was a point in the first act where the actor forgot his lines and he started doing dialogue from the third act and I thought, oh goodness, we can't, we can't jump to the third act here. So I sort of, he was playing my father and I sort of just went and physically got him and said, you know, dad, I think you need to, I think you need to go rest. <laughs> and I took him off stage where he had a script where he could quickly find out where he was. So he went off stage and I kind of went back onto the stage and started um, just ad not really, not really speaking, but maybe, um, fixing the furniture, doing whatever. And he came back out shortly after that. I went, I have something else to say. <laughs> and so we continued on with the scene. So those types of things I, I have dealt with. Um, I've also dealt with situations of actors intentionally breaking the fourth wall. We call the fourth wall. You have, you see when you look at a stage, like the side walls and the back wall, but the audience is considered where another wall would be. And that's considered the fourth wall. And sometimes in film or television, you see an actor speak directly to the camera. That would be breaking the fourth wall. So I've had uh, circumstances where I've worked with actors who, in a comedy, not in a really serious drama or anything like that, but in a comedy or something where something happens and they turn and speak to the audience uh, and, and kind of break that fourth wall. And uh, in certain circumstances, I think the audience does enjoy it, but um, I've also worked with people that used it as a gimmick and would, would do it to my taste more often than I think it should happen. Um, I think it's okay for an actor to know that the audience is in on something, uh, but um, I don't know, I guess I'm a little bit more of a traditionalist when it comes to how one does theater. And I the, produc the productions I've done have not been 
productions that were designed to be heavily ad-libbed. So I think that makes a difference too. I have a question here from Chris Ann Kenyans, who asked about, uh, I, I wouldn't mind hearing about your work in theater you did in Canada, and maybe if it was different working here than in the USA. And uh, some things that were different about theater that I experienced between the US and Canada is, um, I mean, there was non-union, you didn't have, didn't have to be a member of the union for every theater job in either country. Um, although I am a member of the Canadian Actors' Equity, which is the theater union in Canada, as well as Actors' Equity in the US. Uh, so I don't do non-union theater, uh, but there in the US is a theater contract that's a 99 seat where uh, because of the size of the the theater and because it's difficult to make any kind of money on that kind of a production, um, they can get a special agreement with the union, or they used to be able to, uh, to use union actors uh, without paying, uh, they paid a stipend basically, but otherwise certainly nothing that you were doing for the money, you were doing it for the love of the theater. I found in Canada that the theater that I worked with behind the scenes, uh, it was initially predominantly non-union, and yet all the actors were paid, which I thought was interesting, and, and, and I thought it was wonderful. Um, it was a commercial theater, meaning that it wasn't being financed by grants and um, various other sorts of uh, uh, donation-type funding. Um, probably had sponsorships and things like that. It was commercial in that they covered their expenses through probably some sponsorship, but also predominantly through ticket sales. So, um, and they paid all of their actors. It wasn't a huge amount of money, but they provided a paycheck and they provided housing during the run of the show. So it made it possible for uh, a lot of actors to have a long gig <laughs> and get paid for it. Uh, so I really, really liked that. I mean, there are a lot of levels of theater that occur both in both countries. Um, so those were some of the, um, the differences that I experienced as an actor. I loved working in both countries in theater, so I wouldn't say that there was any noticeable difference from that standpoint. Question from Rhea Dance who said, uh, when you're doing plays where you're on location, do you fend for yourself or do they give you housing and food? And how does that go? Uh, typically, it depends again on the contract you're on. Since I was uh, usually hired under a union contract and one of sort of the leads in the show, then I would usually be provided in my contract with um, airfare to and from the location and also some sort of living arrangements, whether it was an apartment for my use during the show or you know a hotel room or something they didn't pay for food but they did cover accommodations so that uh, that is not always the case if actors lived locally they weren't provided with anything and if they were hired as locals which can happen in film and and theater where they'll for for certain roles if they don't have the budget or they don't want to spend the budget on having to pay for transportation and housing for too many actors, then they will put out a notice in the auditions where they're looking for a local hire, uh, which means they're looking for somebody who can drive themselves to and from the theater, who has their own housing. So sometimes actors, if they really want the job and maybe they know somebody in the city and they're like, oh, I can stay with my sister, I can stay with my friend. So then they don't have to worry about paying for housing out of pocket for themselves, um, and yet they still can be considered for the role. I heard through someone I know who went in to do a Broadway show that because it's going to be a long run, they might uh, they might put up an actor initially, or but I think then it becomes up to you to arrange your own housing. Uh, so. But that's for something that's going to be a longer run. And then they are also hopefully being paid enough to be able to find some sort of housing. But 
as many of you may know, housing, finding housing in New York is not the cheapest thing to do. So certainly I think a challenge for actors when they have to figure out their own housing. If you're on tour, it's all part of the cost of the tour. Thank you for joining me once again as I talk about other areas of life and work, and in this case, about my days in the theater. I'll be back. I still have a lot more uh, in-depth questions and answers about theater and then um, also about other areas of my work and life. So I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.